na mchara Esther Taewa na family ba tata ba mama mwebale kutuachira Nenye Nobat Mao President wa Democratic Party kandi minister wa Justice and Constitutional Affairs Runyankole ni nduga mbaje but I think it will be too slow <laughs> Let me speak some English This is not my speech This speech is for our delegation On behalf of our head of delegation who is a full general and on behalf of the groom and his best man and the entire family the blood family the political family of DP is here and friends and those who have stood with him in this journey this transition this is a very important transition to a new life we want to thank you most sincerely our hosts in the Acholi culture when you go to marry a woman culturally the last thing is being given food you really suffer you are even made to go on your knees for several meters I think the International Criminal Court may have to look at some of those things that happen. But Fiona, I want to assure you, we would have done that. Even if we were supposed to move on our knees. And the problem is that it would be me and the general to lead the kneeling. We would have done it for you. So, I want to congratulate the Honorable Fred Dennis Mukasambite and Fiona for making this important decision. The most important thing in life is to decide. Life is easy when you decide. Failing to decide can cause a lot of problems. Somebody is saying failing to decide is deciding to fail. So I want to thank you for making a decision. Many people are decided undecided. We are gathered here to celebrate that decision. Secondly, this is also a celebration of our culture. We have seen Kiganda culture, the Banyankole culture, the Kinyarwanda culture, even a cappella. I think the DP Constitution is the only one which has among its objections the objectives and aims. A proposal to protect and defend African culture and traditions. It is there written. So even if the reverend was not to lecture us on who to marry, actually we don't need to read the Bible. We know who to marry in African culture. We don't marry fellow men. Fred Dennis Mukasambide is the vice president of the Democratic Party. He's a well-known lawyer. He's a businessman and entrepreneur. He is an international speaker. I saw his brother-in-law challenging his command of language because I listened carefully as the young man was talking and I realized that the antelope gets brown because it stays near the anthill. <laughs> 
So the color of the antelope is changing to look like the anthill. Fiona, you've got yourself a very good man. I can tell you something about Honorable Mbide. He has a mask. Behind that mask, actually, is a very sensitive and a very emotional person. But you have got to penetrate that mask. He uses that mask. And many people don't go beyond that mask. So they judge him that sometimes they think he's very aloof and so on. But that is just a mask. I'm sure you have discovered it. I know it because I've known him from when he was very young as a student in Makerere. He does not complain. Even when he's suffering, he will not tell you because of that mask. I supported him when many people were fighting him on sectarian grounds not to become guild president of Makerere. He has supported me. He has even come to Kulu to campaign for me. His kind of politics may not rhyme very well with our kind of Ugandan politics. One time I went to campaign for him in a place called Kalungu. In his usual style, he set up a stage with musicians and comedians. This was a very rural constituency. They want to drink waragi, they want you to speak very plainly, they don't want ceremonies. So Honorable Mbite had a personal assistant standing behind him with a, a folder, a leather folder, with his speech. And then he was there impeccably dressed as usual, in a suit and a tie. And then his personal assistant would hand one page of the speech, then he presents it to the peasants, <laughs> And then he passes the paper back, and then the second page is given to him. So, after the rally, I sat down with him and I said, My brother, this is not your constituency. <laughs> you don't belong here. Look for an urban constituency. So then, that's how he migrated to Masaka municipality. But unfortunately, in politics, sometimes we have what they call waves. They can cause confusion. But overall, he's a good communicator. I also advised him to get land in Kalungu. I asked him, do you have land? Land where you can grow coffee and keep a few animals. He later reported to me that he had acquired some land. Though now there are land wrangles. I'm told some people have decided that their boundary is inside his, his land. But uh, obviously the Minister of Justice <laughs> may take an interest in that injustice <laughs> and ensure that the correct boundary is identified. And if we fail, then uh, Mrs. Esther Taegua, who is the mother-in-law, who is also a lawyer, may take an interest to defend the interests of the son-in-law. We fought hard to ensure that Honorable Mbide goes to Iala. Many people think the Iala seat was a gift from the NRM. It wasn't. The Iala seat used to be shared between FDC and NRM. You know, personally, I hate, I hate hypocrites. I want to be who I am. These people would sit with the NRM, FDC and NRM. Then they share the nine seats. NRM takes six and FDC takes three. There were no elections. They would just bring the name to parliament and the speaker would say, 
I put the question that the following become the MPs of Iela from Uganda. Those in favor say aye to the contrary, no. Aye. And there they go. So I sat with Honorable Mbide and as usual, DP we have been fighting injustice since 1954. And really we don't care. We have enough scars. We are no longer afraid of being wounded. Even our leader was killed. If you total the number of years DPs have spent in prison, it is more than all the other people from other parties combined. Even those skulls and bones in Luero Triangle, the majority are DP. So really, when it comes to fighting and sacrifice, no one can lecture us. So I told Honorable Mbide, are you ready for a fight? And he said, yes. I said, follow me. <laughs> we stormed Honorable Amama Mbabazi's office. I'm telling you these stories to show you the closeness. Now, in DP, as usual, you know in the opposition, there are always rumors. There are those they call malls, that these ones are spies. I don't know what secrets are in the opposition, really. Because to, have, to be a spy, you must be getting secrets. But there are no secrets, so what are you spying about? It's nonsensical. So somebody saw me and me the entering Amama Babazi's office, and then they started spreading a rumor that Mbide has taken Mao to change to NRM. I realized that Mbide and Mama Mbabazi had never met. I was also shocked. I actually thought they had met based on the usual rumors. So we decided to give Mama Mbabazi six months to allow open competition for Iala, or else we take him to court with his party, the Attorney General, and everybody else. After six months, he hadn't complied, so I told him to file a case, but make sure you put DP there as a party. So it was Democratic Party, Fred Dennis Mukasa Mbide versus Attorney General, and the, the, the East, East African Community Secretariat. We won that case. Big defend that case. DP did not put in a single coin. After we won, then they start to fight him not to be the one to go to Iala. As usual, people look for petty, petty things. We can't support Mbide. We can't support Mbide. But we made sure he went. Honorable Mbide, we are very proud of your record in Iala. You represented us very well. And I believe that's the reason why we have the Right Honorable Martin Ngoga, former Speaker of Iala, right here, from the Republic of Rwanda. He is now going to Nairobi as the High Commissioner of Rwanda to Kenya. A few days ago, we were together at a certain residence somewhere near Kigali. I won't talk a lot about that party. It was exclusive, and he was there among the special people. I, I will leave those who seem to know a lot about that party to talk about it. You know in Uganda, those who know a lot don't talk. Those who know very little are the ones yapping. 24 hours, Twitter, Facebook. We want to thank you for being a faithful friend to Honorable Fred Mukasambite. In this world, it is important to have friends. Mr. Godfrey Kirumira was supposed to be here, but as you have heard, he has been our chairman for organizing everything, including the events that are to come. It has pleased the President of Namibia to appoint him as the Honorary Consul of Namibia to Uganda. So, they say, So he quickly took off to go and receive instruments. I think he has landed at the airport, but thanks to traffic jam and other things, he may not arrive here in time. 
The people who are here are selected. Honorable Mbide has very many friends. We would have requested for more numbers, but we were shy. I should have also been this side, actually. Some of you don't know that I should have been on Emmanuel Taibwa's side. I was one of those students in Namiliango who was known as Kaus. You know, Kaus means you basically have nothing. <laughs> Kaus means that particularly you, you don't have any, your parents don't visit you. So you are called Kaus. And uh, to show that categorization, even the canteen had categories of cassava. <laughs> there was the boiled cassava which was called charo. Now if you are Kaus, that is your level. <laughs> then there was the fried one put in oil, they called it chibuka. <laughs> Then there was another one which had some curry powder. It was called London. <laughs> so Taewa was in the London category. <laughs> but in life, it is good to make friends with those who have money. Yeah. I have very many rich friends right from Namiliango, and Taewa was one of them. <laughs> yeah. And even during some campaigns, I would go and threaten him. Say, now I'm contesting for president. Are you not embarrassed if I run out of fuel? And you would contribute despite not being a DP. <laughs> so I can now disclose that. But we know that belt was a DP. So, but I also had other means of getting grab. I, I generally do calligraphy. Have very good handwriting. So I was the official love letter writer for my dormitory. <laughs> so when the young men wanted to communicate their emotions and feelings to the ladies, whether Namagunga, Gayaza, Nabingo, Nabisunsa, all those, I would generally, first of all, call the person and say, start assembling my fees. <laughs> So they would put biscuits and what, then I say, okay, that's now okay. Then I write. And I'm sure when the lady would receive the letter, she would first of all just look at how the letters are sleeping. And that in itself would open the doors of our heart. Namiliango was a school for responsible people. Every Wednesday they would open the gate and we just walk away. Provided you come back before six for roll call. We learn to be responsible. There was only one rule in Namiliango. Be responsible. It's as simple as that. And from that time, I took my path of politics. He took his path of business. And he has prospered in that line. I have visited his home. Your late mom used to love me very much. The challenge was that the prayers were very long. <laughs> so sometimes you would have to say, please don't announce that I'm around. Because the moment you are there, the Bible is open, then cut shave, and then it goes on and on. But it is not a bad thing. Emmanuel and your entire family, plus even Honorable Mary Mujenyi, I think those are the prayers that have held your family. You may, be, you may be receiving favor because of the old woman's spirituality. I believe... Now that is the anthem of uh, the revival movement. My grandfather was one of those, the, the barefoot one. I'll tell you in the future when we have more time how I was baptized the Catholic, despite coming from a very Anglican roots. 
People were shocked when they came to bury my father and found two Protestant bishops <laughs> burying him. So, but their choice is, despite having only 23 letters of the alphabet, you know we don't have S, we don't have Z, we don't have F, so they would insist. Oh, Mujai, Gunaji, Ja, Nebaja, Oh, Molokoji. At least I remember that. To put in Using those words, let's go. So, anyway. Fiona and the uh, Honorable Mbide, this is a happy occasion. And uh, I am not here by accident. I'm here because I am the court of appeal in case there's any issue. <laughs> because I think of all the people in this room, I can summon Honorable Mbide. And he can trust me with his secrets. I have a lot of his secrets. The next person is Honorable Kasolo, who I doubt whether they are, they are always up to good things only. <laughs> but at least Honorable Kasolo taught Honorable me the business. That, that I, and then uh, Mrs. Kasolo, Aisha, being Zika. Casolo is also very close to Honorable Mbide. So they have a very interesting relationship. So one day Mbide calls me and says, we are going somewhere in the way of an operation. I said, what is this? He said, you know, I've, the children are growing, I'm alone, I need to find someone. So we took off for the so-called operation. And then we found this young lady and uh, we were very humble, we spoke a lot, and now here we are. At first I thought they were not taking us seriously. So, our brother Emmanuel Taiwa, please take us very seriously. We want to promise to take care of Fiona, and I want to take personal responsibility together with our army the Uganda Young Democrats, <laughs> plus all the others, to make sure that she's happy. She's a lovely young lady. She's educated. She has made a choice to love Honorable Mbide unconditionally. We thank you, Fiona, for that. That's the most important gift you can give us. Finally, to Fiona's family. Honorable Mbide is Fiona's choice. For herself, not for you. Please respect that. Because out of all the men in the world, she chose the one and only Fred Dennis Mukasa Mbide to have and to hold. So if you love Fiona, Love Honorable Mbide. Now to us here also, I know here we talk a lot, this side of politicians. Oh, Fiona, this, 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 this. From today, let us shut up. No more comments. Fiona is Mbide's choice, full stop. So if we are here claiming to love Honorable Mbide, let's love Fiona. Otherwise, we will be lying. Fiona, you are now the woman of the home. Put your stamp. You know, you cannot change the environment always, but you can also influence it to a certain extent. There's a story about an egg, a potato, and a coffee bean put in hot water. The hot water is the same, but how those three things react was different. The potato became soft when it was subjected to hot water, yet it was hard before. The egg 
was soft, of course, inside. Then it became hard because of the heat of the water. The coffee did not change, but it changed the color of the water. Fiona be the coffee bean in Bide's life. Change his environment. Don't become soft, don't become hard, but bring out who you are and influence his environment so that he can become a better man. There are tough struggles ahead. He needs you. Honorable Mbide needs you. Politics is stressful. When he comes back home, you just give that smile. All the stress will just remain outside the gate. It's very important to do that. So on behalf of this delegation, we are very, very grateful. You have honored us very much. We believe that we are now one family. Thank you for the free seminar you have given us about culture called Okuhinjira. Mr. and Mrs. Taiwa and the entire family, I want to lift you up so that God can continue to protect you. We need you because it, we will be talking at our level. These, these young people may not understand a lot of the things that we talk about. I also want to thank all those now a political statement for the welcome that I received ever since I entered the government as a minister. It's important for me to say it. You know, you can join government and people are very suspicious. They don't welcome you. They think uh, you, have, uh, you have just come to eat, you know. In Uganda, people love talking about eating. But I have always told myself I'm not a stranded person. I have a market in and outside Uganda. I will do my best to serve Uganda. And fellow Ugandans, one lesson that I picked from Rwanda, Kendeze ku politics. I think we need to reduce politics. In Uganda, everything is politics. Let's reduce a bit of politics. Let's leave politics to a few people. The rest of us, let's work. That is one thing that I observed. I don't know whether that's the secret, but doesn't stop me from sharing it. May God bless you all for welcoming us.